Welcome in, everybody. It's another episode of Between the Years. I'm Skylar Callahan. Today, we've got a special guest joining us, and that is West Virginia transfer commit, soon to be signee, TJ Jackson. TJ, thanks for taking the time out here uh, as you're getting moved in there at WVU. Appreciate, uh, appreciate that for having me, man. Absolutely. So let's just start off with getting to know a little bit about you. So go back to your your high school days. Talk about the recruitment out of high school, what that process was like. And obviously, Neil Brown was was a was the head coach at Troy uh, some years back. So did you have any prior connection to him or this staff at all? Uh, I had a little bit of, of, of a connection because, you know, my uh, my head, my head, my head D.C. At, uh, in high school was uh, Coach Leslie's best friend. So I was a. Uh, I was in contest with Coach Leslie since then, since he was a D-line coach at Troy. But I was a little bit too young for them to know how developed I was. I was only like a sophomore in uh, in 10th grade when they left uh, Troy. I got you. So when you come, before you make the decision to go to Troy, uh, what was that process like? The, just the the comparison between getting recruited out of, out of high school versus being recruited out of the portal? Uh, basically, like I said, with um, not everybody knowing how developed I was and how smart I was, because you know I'm a small defense lineman. I was a yeah. six foot, three hundred coming out of high school, so I really didn't get too much of it of big attention. But I did. I got a lot of G five offers from the Sun Belt and a couple of uh, MAC offers, but I never really had you know uh, P fives, big conferences, because like I said, nobody knew how good I could play and back then when I was getting recruited you know most guys was 6'3 you know 315 getting recruited as defensive linemen so like I really didn't get that many P5 offers coming out of high school because nobody knew my skill set like as well and plus I was a bigger guy I was 300 300 pounds coming out of high school man and I wasn't that's pretty 280 that's pretty, that's pretty yeah I, I was I, I was I was a little short tree stump, but I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't as small as I was now uh, coming out of high school. So, and my ball game, I I played a very different game than what I do now. Yeah. So I feel like my time in college really helped me improve that, and just you know, help get college coaches to see what I could do just off playing against, you know, P5s like Duke, uh, Ole Miss, and schools like that. Yeah, I mean, nothing's wrong with the Sun Belt, man. I mean, up here we call yeah. it the Fun Belt. So, I mean, that's a, that's an interesting, entertaining conference. A lot of good football down there in that conference. Yeah, it is. First team, uh, all Sun Belt. So, just talk about that time that you had at Troy, playing in the Sun Belt, some of the memories you have. What, what was it about playing at Troy or just in that conference – um, that that you'll remember the most. Uh, mainly, it was because Troy was always like a, a, a home to me. Like most guys that's from my uh, town in uh, Millbrook, uh, they basically go to Auburn or yeah. Tuscaloosa or schools like that. But I was always the type of dude to go to Troy because I always had friends in Troy. Uh, my family went to Troy. I had a lot of. Uh, aunties and uncles graduate from Troy. So like, it was just, I always felt like Troy was the second home. I used to always go to the Troy games. Like then when I saw them beat LSU, I was like, I want to play for Troy. And like, <laughs> it's just, it's just like, then I was playing down there. It was like, I'm, I'm playing at home. Cause like my, my, my hometown is only like an hour and 10 minutes, an hour and a half from Troy. So I had a lot of family come and watch me play. So it was just like, I'm still playing in high school. Like, I still, my family's, I got, like, over 15, 20 family members there. Like, wow. they like the fans. I love the fans. The fans, they were always fun to play for. They always got loud during the games. The coaching staff that brought me in and coach staff that came in, and they just always, you know, showed me to, like, they taught me to be the man that I am today. And showed me the ins and outs of football and then showed me how to study football. And I, I, I appreciate my time at Troy a lot. It's not just like how other guys don't appreciate where they came from. I, I, I appreciate Troy a lot. So talk about that decision to leave, because obviously it's 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 a hard one for you, because like you said, you drew, you grew up, you, you were wanting to kind of play for Troy. You had success there. Uh, the team had success. So how difficult of a decision was that? 
And when you entered the portal, was there anything specifically that you were looking for, whether it was a scheme, a team, a location, anything in particular that you were looking for? Uh, my decision to hit the portal, it was very hard because, you know, I, I had to hit it late. I hit it late because I, I did want to play the ball game with my teammates. I did want to, you know, experience that week with them that we had in Birmingham. And to just hit the portal, it was just like, dang, like, I don't want to leave. Like, even the day I left, you know, me and my roommate, we said, we, we said a couple of bro brotherly <laughs> tears because, you know, I was leaving. And like it was, it was a very hard decision for me to even just, even just up and leave, especially with the quick turnaround I had. Right. And it was like, dang, like. But my my vision to like into looking like for the next school, it was to, for some like somebody to like. How the coaching staff I had with Coach Sumrall, the coaching staff, the schemes. And like just not to have a coaching staff that's all so focused on football, but also invested in my life, invested in my family's life, and you know, not just you know, a so high, high football guy. I understand like you gotta be all football sometimes, but it's 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 time for, for like to be with your family, spend time with your family, right. and Coach Brown, Coach Leslie, and Coach Jacks. The the two days I was down here, they. They really showed me that, like, they're, when it's time for football, they're going to be football. But when it's time for family, they're going to be for family. And I really appreciate that. And that was, like, a number one factor in what college I wanted to choose and where I wanted to go. And then also, I never knew, like, there was a spot in West Virginia where, like, it's a high point. And, like, you just looking over, like, the ridge. Oh, yeah. That is, they took yeah, you like, there. Was, that, that's a pretty sick place. Yeah, it was it was a it was beautiful. Like when I saw that, I was like, yeah, bro, I I never like connected with nature like so much from that. And then like just seeing the snow, I never see snow a lot. So like just from <laughs> the snow, like, I was like, yeah, this might be the spot. So the coaching and the scenery of the place that that really helped me make my decision. So you took visits to Houston and Indiana, I believe, and then you had a few others that got in the mix there, but. What? No, I had I had those I had those set up. Or you I had them set up. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I never went because I came here and it was just like that was the spot. That was it, it's a spot. And so I, so I'm outside gonna of the the coaching staff and kind of the things that they took you around to see, like what was some of the things that stuck out to you while you're on your visit? You you're just like man. I don't need those other visits. I don't need to even entertain anything else. This is where I want to be. What made that decision so easy for you? Uh, mainly because the coach, the rest of the visits I was going to, I already knew the coaches and I already knew, like, not trying to say anything bad, but I already knew, like, how, like I said, that factor between can you experience football and family. I already right. knew how they were. Like, I already know their hard-nosed coaches. I don't mind having a hard nosed coach, but like I said, you gotta have that factor in splitting it up between family and football. So like, I already knew them. So I was like, that West Virginia's already a spot just off that number one factor. And then I know I looked at Houston scenery. It's a city type vibe. I'm not very much of a city guy. Indiana, Indiana, it's a city, it's a country town. It's it's really in the middle, and I was really looking looking for like a country town from like where I'm from so where I could still feel at home, be comfortable with this with the spot. And then while I was here, it was the facility. Then how how even the coaches wise showed love to my family and just, you know, like I said, that scenery, that that spot that they took me to. I love that man. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. It definitely is. And they're going to probably show you a lot of other things around the state that, that are going to catch your eye, too. Um, so going to, I guess, the the whole recruiting piece of this. So when they were recruiting you, obviously you told me they, they expect you to kind of come in, be almost like an every down type of guy. Is there a certain technique that they want you to play or a certain role that they expect out of you? And, and what do you feel like you do best? Uh, I mean, I feel like I'm I'm pretty good off the edge, like. But I could play 
the three, I can play the five, and I can play a nine if I have to. It's just I really don't feel like, all right, this is what I'm best at because it's not football nowadays. You have to be able to be versatile and exactly. learn different positions. So I honestly just feel like you throw me anywhere on the D-line, I could do it. But like I used to joke around with my last coaching staff, you put me anywhere on the defense, I'm going to do it. So like, I just the type of guy that's not just all one down, uh, one one technique type of guy or one or one position type of guy. I want to learn all of them. I want to be able to do all of them because you never know when there's a time when, all right, you got to play this position because somebody's down or you got to play this position because, all right, they want you to go against that guard because he's the weakest link or, you know, those situations. Because it's been plenty of times I was at Troy, I had to play nose. And I was like two fifty five playing nose. <laughs> and it was like it's a different world down there. there. Yeah. It's a different world, and like in that shade and that and the head up on the center, it's a different. It's a different type of deal. So you just gotta be able to be versatile nowadays. And I never really, really thought about like, all right, what spot I'm best at because I feel like you gotta be best. You gotta be good at every spot you play, or wherever the defensive uh, defensive coaches want you to go. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's that's the thing nowadays, especially at the NFL level. Like, I cover the Panthers, too, and I, I see it all the time with these guys in, in Carolina where they want that versatility. You've got to be able to play yeah. both inside and outside, multiple techniques. you got to be able to rush the passer, stop the run, all this mm-hmm. stuff. And having that in your belt, that's, that's a huge thing for you. So, also, West Virginia, coming off a nine-win season, they just won the bowl game. They finished number 25 in the coaches' poll. How much of a factor was that kind of just – was that just kind of like the icing on the cake? Like, this team is bringing a lot of pieces back. They're off a nine-win season. This thing looks like it's heading in the right direction. They could be a contender in the Big 12 and maybe maybe even the college football playoffs. So, what were your thoughts on that and their season uh, that they just had? Uh, that, was a pretty, that was a pretty big factor because I, w- I was – I'm not going to lie, every single school that I was thinking about going to, I looked at the roster – see what they had coming in. And every other school that has, you know, been in contact with me or has offered me or uh, tried recruiting me, they was all in a rebuilding process. And, you know, it's my last year. Yeah. I, I can't be in a rebuilding process right now, you know. You I'm trying to – I got to win now. And I want to help West Virginia do that and get to the college play- playoffs and win the whole thing and not just, uh, dang, like – we're so close. I want to. I want to do the whole thing, and I, I I do everything in my power to make that happen. So before your your process became known with West Virginia and your whole recruitment here, how much did you know about the program? Like, do you are you well versed in like the Tavon Austin days, the Steve yeah. Smiths? So like, what is your history or your knowledge of the program before your recruitment? Growing up, I watched a lot of college football. Like I watched teams like Bowling Green, like you know teams like that. Yeah, and anytime I seen West Virginia on, I I click it, especially back in the Geno days, Pat White days, and I was I was like six, seven watching Pat White, like just watching him, and especially uh, Tavon Austin. I I still watch his highlights to this day. That's the best highlight tape ever ever made. I, I hands down, I don't think there's even a competition. But uh, so going to um, last year. We're going to go through a little bit of a rapid fire, so you can keep this as short as you want. I like to do this with some of these guys on uh, the recruits and, and whatnot. So we're going to go through. Let's start here first. Favorite NFL team? Steelers. All right. All right. Favorite NFL – or actually, let's go not just NFL. Let's go favorite pro athlete of all time. Uh, Cam Newton. All right. There we go. Cam Newton. Uh, let's see here. Let's go favorite WVU jersey or uniform combo. So helmet, uh, all white, all, all white, white. stormtroopers. Storm yeah. All right, <laughs> let's go. Uh, Madden or NCAA? Since it's coming back, and I know you're probably really young when NCAA was still out, but it is. Man, coming back, I was so. playing. I was playing. I was playing NCAA before Madden. 
That's right. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go NCAA. I still try to play NCAA 14 to this day. I, I, I'm right there with you. The revamp thing was okay, but I'm ready for the real thing. Uh, I didn't, I didn't really get into the revamp thing. I just, I just went and bought a, a, a PS3 because I already had the disc, so I just went and bought a PS3. <laughs> now you might be able to get on the game, so that'll be pretty cool. I know. I so, know. I mean, I'll put my, I've been putting myself on that game for. 10 years now. <laughs> <laughs> what would your rating be on NCAA? I'd say at 82, 83. 82, 82 yeah. Okay. I like it. Yeah, I'm be modest. I'm be modest. A little bit. I'm be modest. And then uh, lastly, your biggest role model, and, and you can go a little bit more in depth on this one. Uh, I wouldn't say he's like my role model, like personally in my life, but just watching how he did things and watching how he competed in a, in like, in a competitive game. I say Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. yeah. Mentality. Yeah. yeah, especially, like, when he got when he got into, like, a mess. I mean, I, I watched that whole game when he tore his, he tore his Achilles. When he tore his Achilles, I said, dang, he's going to be out. I, I seen him come back and shoot the two free throws. I said, yeah, that man is a dog. And, like, just, just now to this day, I remember the South game. I had sprained my ankle badly. Like, I couldn't even walk off the field almost. Then it was just like, come on, you got to finish this game. It's a close game. Your team needs you. And, and I just, I clicked on that switch and, you know, I continue to play. So I feel like I've always watched Kobe. I always watch his highlights. I even play, I even model my game when I play basketball after him. Like, I do everything I can just so I can be like Kobe. Just, just, just in like a, not right with him, but in a in a way. I got you. I got you. Well, now I gotta ask because you put it out there. We're into basketball. LeBron or MJ? Don't get this one wrong. I mean, you said you said LeBron or MJ. I'm gonna go with LeBron. Oh but, no! Oh. But but I'm not. I'm not. Finna, I'm not gonna put LeBron over Kobe. <laughs> hey, I'm the same way. I would go Jordan, Kobe, LeBron, but that's just me. Yeah, mean, when it team. comes to when it comes to when it comes to knowledge of the game and the ins and outs of the game, I will go LeBron. But when it comes to the skill set, I'm gonna go with Jordan. Yeah, because Jordan I, had a skill set. I feel like anybody who's six eight and two sixty, two seventy, should be able to do whatever bully. he wants. Yeah, do whatever you want on the court. Like if you don't like. You big for no reason. <laughs> Give me your height, bro. I love it, man. TJ, we appreciate you so much for coming on and, and hopping on here with us. And uh, you got one season left, so we we wish you the best of luck. And uh, may, may it treat you well in your, in your time in Morgantown. Thank you, and I appreciate you having me, man. Absolutely. Again, once again, that is TJ Jackson, now West Virginia defensive lineman. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on YouTube and Mountaineers now and give us a follow on X at the same handle. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode.